Greetings, everybody. I am in Mexico right now. I'm in Porto, Porto Velarte. Probably saying that wrong. And uh, I walked into a cemetery and found this. There is a plant growing out of the grave. I've never seen this before. I've seen a lot of uh, plants growing like in, a, in a, a mound, you know, like on the ground, but uh, like a, a raised tomb like this, having a, having something growing in it is is certainly a unique thing. And this is a fruit that I don't recognize. I don't know what this is. Childish folks might uh, make some comparisons to what this looks like, but uh, if you put that aside, it is a very attractive fruit. I mean, a vi very vibrant pink color, it's very glossy, and it's got this unique, like, two-seed sort of thing to it. That's, uh, very interesting looking. Hey, it's me from the future. So, I did do some research about this plant, and I found out that the scientific name for it is the Dishie Ahue. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And uh, so I was trying to be all respectful about this and not point out that this looks like um, bright red shining part of the male anatomy. And uh, it turns out that in Mexico, the common name for this is bull's balls. Yeah, it's huevos de toro, which means bull's eggs, and they mean bull's balls. So, um, yeah, so much for being respectful. Back to the video. And I have no idea what this is. I'm going to do some research and hopefully be able to figure it out, but um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. And there's a bunch of seeds here, and I thought this might be uh, seeds from that fruit, but it turns out it is not. It is from this guy up here, uh, which I think this is a tropical almond tree, which I did review in the past. But uh, yeah, this. What is this? Can I eat this? If I eat this, will I end up in this cemetery here? I think uh, I need to exercise some caution. I've got some more information. So this fruit is part of the dog bane family. It is a family of fruits with many, many different plants, but it gets that name because several of these plants were once used to poison dogs. You know, they were used for other things too, like poisoning arrows, poisoning a variety of different things. But uh, the key word here is poison, okay? There are a lot of poisonous plants in this family. Not all of them. For instance, the Natal plum, that's part of the dogbane family. Those are delicious. Uh, however, the bull's balls, it is poison. The type of poison that is in bull's balls is a cardiac glycoside. And basically what that does is it lowers your heartbeat, but increases the thrust of each heartbeat. So uh, this is something that can be utilized in the medical world. And historically, people have used this fruit as like an herbal medicine, but I don't really like talking about the medicinal purposes of various plants on this channel, and it's for reasons like this. In the wrong amount, this thing can kill you. Although it does have some medicinal use and it has been used medicinally uh, historically, if you don't know what you're doing, it's extremely dangerous, and it would be reckless for me to recommend that anybody actually use it for that purpose. So, don't use it for that purpose. I am a little hesitant to pick it for a couple of reasons. One, it might be poisonous, and two, it, you know, might be impolite to the grave here. Um, so I'm gonna... Well, there is actually another one growing over there that is not coming out of the tomb. Okay, so I can pick one of those. I just want to prove to you I'm not desecrating a grave, okay? There is the tree growing right there, or the, the plant is growing there. It is not growing out of the grave. It is growing from a fruit that came from this, I'm guessing, but then fell on the side and then grew into separate plants. I am going to take one of these, comfortable that I'm not going to upset any uh, spirits or family members or anything like that. So I'm going to take one of these guys just to take a better look at it. Ooh, very latexy. 
very bright red, probably very poisonous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and uh, do a little bit of research on it. Maria, thank you very much for this fruit. And it's not just this grave here. There's also one over here. And if we come over here, there's another one. There's one over here. This means something and I don't know what it means. So I'm going to find out what it means and then I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, I, I still don't know why this is used in cemeteries. Okay, so I still have no idea what this is, but let's uh, at least break it open, see what's inside. Weird. Okay, so it's got several of these white pieces to it. Yeah, it's, it's powdery. So just spitting that out, but just to get the flavor of it for scientific purposes, don't do that yourself. Um, it's mildly sweet, kind of like a mealy apple in flavor, but uh, the flavor is very, very low. You're mostly just getting a little bit of a sweet taste, which uh, is dangerous if that is poisonous, because I can see like a kid taking that and like, they, they look like toys, like they're, they're so bright and red, I, I can see a kid opening that up and putting it in their mouth. So if it is poisonous, then that is kind of a dangerous one. But if it isn't, yeah, it's all right. It's not, well, it's not all right. It's not, it's not very good, but it doesn't really taste much like anything. It's just like a mild, sweet flavor, like a two out of 10 with uh, the flavor of like a mealy apple that is like very low. So hardly much of a taste to it, but it's still pretty cool. And how I found it's really cool. So I call this a success. So, like I said, I did some more research about this, and uh, I came across something that is is pretty, pretty sad. I debated on not bringing it up because, you know, we're having fun. We're having fun here. Bulls, balls. I know. But I do think it's important to talk about this, um, so I'm going to bring it up. You know how I said that this would be a very dangerous thing for kids because it looks like a toy and they're sweet? Yeah, so I, I came across a, a news article from Columbia about two children who ate several of these fruits and they died. I think we need to talk about this. We need to talk about fruit because fruit out in the wild is is dangerous. And I feel like maybe I'm setting a bad example <laughs> because I did try the thing. But for me, I feel like taking a little taste of something and like spitting it out, which is what I did in this case. And off camera, I actually rinsed out my mouth with water. For my purposes of documenting plants, it can be valuable information to know what it tastes like for identifying or, you know, finding out what compounds are in it or what have you. This is not me trying to enjoy fruit. <laughs> this is me trying to document it. Do not do what I am doing. You know, every now and then I will get a comment on one of my videos about a poisonous fruit where I'm like, this is poison. Let's talk about it. It's interesting. Do not eat it. And I'll get a comment that's like, oh, I didn't know that was edible. Cool. No. <laughs> you know, with YouTube, like, you know, half the, half the people watching are not fully paying attention. I realize that. You might be, you know, watching videos to go to sleep or you're doing dishes, dishes and it's like on the background or something. You know, not everybody's paying full attention to YouTube. I respect that. But <laughs> in the case of this... Don't don't monkey around with plants that you find in the forest, okay? If you, if you find something out there, don't just start eating it. Uh, I don't want to set that sort of example. I'm doing this for a reason, but that doesn't mean that these things are edible. It's important to educate yourself about something before you eat it, and it's definitely important to educate your kids. So let me say once again, bulls balls, funny as the name is, weird as they are, they are not edible, but man, are they an interesting one. I hope you enjoyed this episode, everybody, and I will see you all next time. I would like to give a big shout out to Xander. Xander is a super patron over on patreon.com. Patreon.com is 
How this channel happens is how I can afford to go on all the adventures that I do. So Xander, thank you very much for your support. Uh, to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about Patreon, I've put a link to it in the description below. Uh, another way to support the channel is to buy a shirt. I've got t-shirts like this one right here. The link to that is also in the description below. Thanks so much. Take care.